Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 18 on our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to get out your most enormous mug of iced coffee and I will need you to get ready to rumble. No, no, we're not going to rumble. I shouldn't tease, man, because engineers are so such mild-mannered people. But if they ever start rumbling, there's no stopping them. So I shouldn't joke about that. But what I will need you to do is I will need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear. Hey, want to take a second, like always, and thank you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. You're a huge encouragement to me when you decide to actually become a part of this channel, and it helps me keep my gear up to date so I can continue to provide quality content for you. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. We are going to learn some cool stuff today. Hey, do you guys notice that, like, I made the little live window of the Jetson Nano there, the little live window, I made it smaller because I've been getting a lot of hate from you guys because I'll be topping something and it will go behind that window and then you really get, get mad at me. But I really like it, but I just made it smaller. So can we reach a truce? Are you happy if it's smaller? We'll try real hard not to get any of the program back behind it. Okay, what are we going to learn today? We are going to learn how to create and use trackbars in OpenCV because to do artificial intelligence we have to lay the groundwork we have to lay the foundations and remember it's all about grabbing an image from the camera and displaying the image and sitting in that magic area between grabbing a frame and showing a frame and sitting there in Python and doing some mischief in there well in order to do our magic in there we've got to be able to interact in a tangible way with that window we learned last week the first thing which was really important which was was how to process magic mouse click so that we could get data and display things based on what the mouse was doing in the window. And today is, is very much related. It's, it has to do with track bars. And so let's jump right in and let's see if we can get this thing going. I'll need you to open up your Visual Studio. Okay. And then I will need to get out of your way a little bit here. All right, that looks good. Okay, we are operating in the folder called OpenCV. And so we will go there. And then we will come up to our main PyPro folder. We will come over and we will click on the little plus icon. And we will name this program CV2. <coughs> or I'm sorry. Our convention is Open. CV and I believe this will be program number seven and then we are going to call this track bar dot pi boom we're ready to code okay I remind you that we always start with the same base code the same foundation code that just runs out and operates the camera you should have that saved from earlier lessons but if you don't you can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com you can click the little search icon here and search on web camera or uh, raspberry pi camera nano you know something like that you'll get here pretty easily and then you see i have the code down here we are going to click on the two little page icons and then control V to grab that code then get this browser out of the way come over here and paste the code I should go ahead and change our base thing but you know one thing that we really like to do we like to move that window where it's not starting in random spots and so when we show the window we are going to do a quick CV2 dot move window move window what window do we want to move? We want to move our nano cam window. And then what do we want to do? We want to move it to, I got to get outside of that string there. Okay. We want to move it to zero comma zero. All right. Let's fire this thing up just to make sure I didn't break something. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. And Ah, okay, I didn't break it. I forgot that if you're using the Raspberry Pi camera, we need to uncomment out these two lines. Okay, if you are using a webcam, you need to uncomment out this line 
and your webcam will probably be zero. If zero doesn't work, try one, but the webcam should work on either zero or one. Okay, now let's see if we can fire this thing up. Run Python file in terminal. Boom, there we go. Okay, now let's queue out of this thing. So we type Q and it kills it in a very graceful way. And now we are ready to start doing some coding. So we've got to create the track bar. And we're going to do this after we create the camera. But you've got to create the track bar in a window, and we don't have a window yet. We create our window down here with this, uh, with this cv2.imshow nanocam. That's where, the, uh, that's where the window is actually created. But we need to go ahead and create that up here. And so we are going to say cv2.named window. And then what do we want to name our window? We want to name it Nano, Nano Cam. And this will be the same window down before, but we're just introducing it up here. So now we can work with it with the track bar before we get down into our while loop. Now let's create our first track bar. It is cv2.create track bar. And it guesses it. That's always a good sign. Okay create track bar. <clears throat> now we got to give it some some numbers. All right. So, I've got to give the track bar a name. I'm going to call the name xval. I guess I should say I'm going to name the track bar xval. So, xval is a string. xval is now the name of the track bar that we are creating. Okay? Which window do we want the track bar to be created in? We only have one window. Guys, this is not rocket science. Nano cam. Okay. Now we need to have a a starting value and an end value. So we're going to go from zero to five hundred pixels. Okay. Or it's going to. I'm sorry. It's not pixels. It's just going to slide from zero to five hundred arbitrary numbers. And then we have to have a callback function. We are going to call the callback function nothing, because here we really don't need to do anything in a function. But we do have to create the function. So we don't want it to do anything. So we're just going to call it nothing. Hey, a little thing about this parameter. The track bar always goes from zero to some value. The value that we're going is 500. This zero is not the start value. It's the initial setting on the track bar. So if I made this 25, okay, the track bar is still going to go from zero to 500, but it's going to start at 25. Okay, think about that. That's kind of a you just kind of need to understand that. Okay, now if we're going to call nothing as our callback function, we got to define it. So we define what? Nothing. And then colon. And now we got to define the nothing function. What do we want the nothing function to do? What do we want the nothing function to do? Absolutely nothing. So we just give it a pass. Okay, isn't this kind of like a little bit of nonsense here that we're having to do? Okay, so now our track bar is created. Now we will come down here and we will get in our little magic room between reading the frame and showing the frame. And that is where we do all of our craziness. What do we want to do here? We want to read that track bar. So how would we do that? Well, I can create a variable xval. Now, this is just a normal variable. This isn't the same string xval. Maybe I should call it something different, but I'm just going to call it xval. So xval is equal to <coughs> cv2 dot get track bar position. Do you see it guessing that? Get track bar position. And now we got to give it some parameters. What track bar do we want? Well, we want to get the only track bar we have, which is xval. Okay. And then which window is it in? It's in nano cam. Sometimes I feel like it should have already known that. But anyway, nonetheless, we will do that. So we want to go to the track bar xval. It's in nano cam. And now whatever that is, it puts it in the variable xval. So let's just print xval just to see if this darn thing is working. Okay, xval like that. All right, let's right mouse click and let's run this sucker. I have an uneasy feeling that I am not getting a happy little, what did I do? 
run Python file in terminal. Invalid syntax. Invalid syntax. What did it not like about my nothing function? Define nothing, N-O-T-H-I-N-G, colon, pass. That sure looks like a good colon to me. What's wrong here? Oh, I know what it is. Okay, I got to pass it a parameter. I'm sorry. Even though we're not doing anything yet, I pass it a parameter, so I'll just pass it X. Let's try it again. That one scared me, man. I thought that should be working. All right. Okay. So look at this. It goes from 0 to 500, and then I'm printing out the value here, and then when I slide it, it changes. Boom. I think we should do this more, right? The professional football players do it to celebrate their victories. I think as engineers, as we have these small victories, we should do the double chest bump. Are you with me on that? Okay, so do you see now I can slide the bar and then it goes into a variable that I can use in Python. That is pretty cool. Okay, let's go on. Let's do some more stuff here while we got this. Well, if we created a track bar called XVAL, let's create another track bar. What are we going to call it? Class? Class? What are we going to call it? We are going to call it YVAL. But we'll just copy this one and paste it and change it to YVAL. Now I can come down here if I can read XVAL. What else can I do? I can read YVAL and put it in the variable YVAL. Okay, now let's just make sure this this works. So I'm going to print xval comma y val. All right, right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Two track bars. Uh huh. Two track bars. Uh huh. And look, twenty five twenty five is their initial value. Now, just to show you, you see, I can go to zero on y. Okay, so I can move these things around, and then I've got these two variables that I can use in my program. Pretty cool, huh? What can we do with this? <clears throat> can anybody see where I'm going with this? I don't want to print them out anymore, so I'm going to take that out. What could I do? Hmm, what could I do? I could come down here, and what I could do is I could create a circle. CV2 dot... How do I create a circle? C I R C L E. C V2 dot circle. And now I've got to put it in, uh, I've got to put it on some image. What image do I want to put it on? Frame, because that's the image that we read in, right? You should kind of be familiar with that. We're going to put it into frame. And then what we are going to do is we are going to give it a position. Well, what position do we want to give it? It's got to be a tuple, so I open up another set of parentheses here. How about, how about x val comma y val? That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So now that's the position. The radius is going to be 5. The radius of the circle is going to be 5. And now what we are going to do is give it a color to 55 comma 0 comma 0. Uh-huh. And then we are going to make it a solid, a solid circle. So we'll say minus 1. If you go like 1, 2, 3, it'll be kind of like the line width of the circle. But if you give it a minus 1, it should make it solid. Okay, let's see what happens here. Hold your breath. Ah! Didn't work. What happened? Did I do that wrong? One Python file in terminal. Ah, okay, look at that. Look at that little blue dot. The little blue dot is where... 25, 25, uh-huh. So now what happens if I slide this? Look at that. That slides, and this slides, slides it in Y. And so let's say here, I could put it there. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? All right. That's pretty cool. Now, if I'm sliding across the page, I probably should not set these things up as 500 and 500. XVAL should really be display width, right? It should be kind of like the display width. And I think it would be better if I change this to display width. And then the Y value would be what? 
dis display height. And so now my trackbar sort of maps itself onto the dimensions of the uh, of the window. So let's run that again. Okay, so now let's see if I go across it goes all the way down to the bottom and if I go across here it will go all the way. I better move it up some or down some there. You can see it. So you see I can put that little dot anywhere I want in the screen. So if I wanted to try if I wanted to see like where this button is, I could kind of bring this up and then bring this over. Now this you might rather do with a mouse click, but believe me, there are times that you will want to do these functions with track bars and they're coming up. They're coming down the pike pretty darn quickly. Okay, so that I think is pretty neat. We have learned how to create a track bar. Okay, now what I want you to do is I'm going to have to open a terminal and I'm going to have to run a program here let's see ls i'm going to go to change directory i should have already had this open i'm sorry i did not have this open change directory pi pro and then ls and change directory uh open or uh i'm sorry be patient with me on this okay don't hate me about this okay ls Okay, so I'm going to Python my track bars dot track bars dot pi. This is a different program. This is your homework assignment. Okay, guys. This is your homework assignment. How many track bars do I have? Four. I make a little green rectangle. If I move the x value what happens? It moves the little green box up and down with Y value or it moves it right and left with X value. But oh my, what if I want to box my face? That was crazy. What if I want to box my face? Right there, right there. What's the problem? The box is too small. Never fear. I have another track bar called width and height and now I need to move it and now I need to move it and there you see I've ca I could capture my face now what you could do is you could go in there and you could actually capture that you could take that region of the image and do something with it and so you see I now can do this and so that is your homework assignment for next week what I need you to do is create a rectangle that you can control its position on the screen and you can control its size on the screen with a track bar. And again, these are things that you're going to need to be able to do in future lessons to go out and interact with that screen. Hey, I had a lot of fun today. Man, I am having a lot of fun as we're building this tool set. We can do mount, we can grab a frame, we can show a frame in between grab and show. We can draw circles, we can draw lines, we can put text on it, we can process mouse events, we can go out and do a color picker, picker or now we can draw using, uh, draw using track bars. And so I am actually pretty excited excited about this but your homework assignment for next week is to go ahead and do this and then uh, I will show you next week uh, how to do the program and then I think after that we're going to be getting really close to going in there and really start doing some of the image processing where we will then be getting to the point of really working on the algorithms and the techniques and the methods that will allow us to do things like recognize objects and track objects and so this has been 18 lessons and I appreciate you guys' patience but again what my goal is is for you to be able to go out and develop software on your own have an idea and then go out and pursue it on your own when I go through these videos where you know these tutorials where you're just like running someone's code and you have its cool demo but you have no idea how to make your own code it's kind of like okay you're gonna spend your life running other people's code or are you gonna start developing your own code you're that guy that's gonna develop your own code yes you are okay guys this, I've had a lot of fun. This is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.